Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to be talking about the five different types of steel that are used in armoring and building the battleship. Uh, and there are of course more types throughout stainless steel and other stuff like that, but really I'm just talking about the, the main structural things. So we're going to be talking about Class A armor, Class B armor, STS or special treatment steel, HTS or high tensile steel, and MS or mild steel. So you're looking at your blueprints for the Iowa class battleships and you see in some places there is a number and then a hashtag. Nope, their rotary phones had something on it called a pound sign. So in many cases with thinner plates, like the shell plating around the side of the ship, you will see uh, something like the number 40 and then the pound sign, meaning that it is 40 pound plate. So for all of the five types of steel that we're using to armor or build the ship, uh, they are basically the same weight. So you could put on 40 pounds of mild steel, or you could put on 40 pounds of Class A armor. Uh, so what does that 40 pounds mean? Uh, 40 pounds is the weight of a square foot of steel that is one inch thick. So if you see 40 pound plate, that means that it is inch thick steel. So much of the shell plating, looking at your blueprints of the ship, will say that it is 60 pound plate or inch and a half steel. And in most cases that is STS or special treatment steel. Uh, other places you might see it thinner than that, 20 pound for half inch or 12 pound for uh, quarter inch and some other uh, smaller numbers as well throughout. So that's just the weight of a square footage of that particular poundage. Uh, when you get up to actual armor thicknesses, it will usually tend to say uh, four inches of STS or six inches of uh, class B armor plate or whatever the case may be. So if armor plate weighs as much as regular old mild steel, why the heck don't we just build the whole ship out of armor plate? Uh, well, the US Navy came as close to that as anyone. In most countries, you would build the ship out of uh, mild steel. That's what's cheapest and easiest to manufacture. However, American battleships like the Iowa class tended to be largely built out of special treatment steel, which is actually uh, armor plate. Uh, and STS can be used as structural steel. So it's a huge national investment and it makes a stronger ship at the end of the day. Mild steel and HTS are, they, they tend to be used for decks and things like that that aren't part of the strict armor defense. Shell plating, armored decks, uh, the armor around the ship tends to either be STS, Class B, or Class A armor plate. STS and Class B armor are metallurgically basically the same. Uh, it's just that there are three different ways of making armor plate. You can roll it if it is four inches or below. Uh, and if it is rolled Class B armor, it is called STS, Special Treatment Steel. If it is more than four inches thick, whether it is Class B or Class A armor, it is forged. So basically you take ingots of the steel, and we're talking multi-ton ingots, and you heat them up to be red hot, and then you're putting them into, it's like a hammer forge, but it's a huge pneumatic hammer that is beating out those ingots to the size that you need. So the shell plating of the ship, inch and a half STS or 60 pound plate, that can be rolled out. The armor plating on the gun turret here around me is all thicker than uh, four inches, so it is forged. And then you'll also get castings. So if you look right in front of me at this viewport, that is a complex structure that has a uh, periscope sticking through it. So that is a casting. They, they just cast the steel to be that shape straight from the beginning. So those are your three ways. I'm up here on the gun turret. 
what is all of the armor here? We, we've talked about the difference between STS and Class B armor, and basically it's the same whether it's forged or uh, rolled. The difference between Class A and Class B is Class A armor is face hardened. If you heat uh, basically the top 20% of it, more carbon enters it and it becomes harder. It also becomes more brittle. Uh, so Class A armor is more difficult to make, it takes longer to make, but it is more resistant. And so with the top being face hardened, that's more resistant, uh, but it's more likely to shatter. So the back is comparatively soft and ductile and allowed to bend. And so this is why there's a difference between the two. There are some parts of the ship uh, where you wonder, why did they choose Class B instead of Class A? Uh, well, the reason is, is there something behind that that will catch splinters? When we're talking about the armored deck, we can use Class A armor, and there is a separate splinter deck below it. We're going to cut to that in a minute here. When we're talking about the turret face plates, there is no room in the turret to have an additional splinter protection behind the armor. So the turret faceplate is Class B armor. Likewise, the conning tower and the uh, barbettes for the turret, there isn't any sort of internal splinter protection there. So those are Class B armor, uh, so that they are supposed to bend and deform if they're being defeated by a projectile, not shatter and shoot splinters into the space. Most of the armor on the ship is mounted to a backing plate. So for example, the turret faceplate, 17 inches thick, Class B armor, is mounted to a two and a half inch thick backing plate with some concrete sandwiched in between just to fill up any voids that there might be. This doesn't count as splinter protection because they more or less form one solid piece of armor with the equivalence of about 18 and 3 quarters inches of uh, thickness if they were a homogenous plate instead of the 19 and a half inches that it seems like they should be adding 17 and two and a half. Uh, because these are mounted together, that doesn't count for the splinter protection. So typically you have at least uh, two to three feet with the splinter deck on this ship, it ends up being 30 inches. Uh, so that gives you room for the armor to bend, then shatter, and then something to catch those splinters. Other parts of the turret can be made out of Class A armor. For example, the sides of the turret. Here you can see the Class B faceplate, and here you can see where it meets the Class A sides. The sides are not going to be pointing at an enemy ship. The faceplate's going to be pointing at the ship you're dueling. And so, uh, that side is not going to take a direct hit like the faceplate will. It does take a hit, it will be at an extremely high obliquity, so it will hit and deflect off. And so you want something face hardened. If for some reason we're caught broadside with our guns fore and aft like this, an enemy ship hits us, that's going to cause all sorts of problems inside the turret because that shell will defeat the face hardened armor and it will send splinters into the space without any splinter protection. But battleships aren't going to sneak up on other battleships. We would have our guns turned at the enemy so that the shell isn't hitting this directly. So if we're not intending to take direct hits on the side of the turret, why do we armor it at all? Well, two reasons, really. Uh, we might be swarmed in battle, uh, and so enemy ships may get around our sides and be shooting at the the side of the turret. We might not be pointing our gun at an entire fleet. Uh, if that happens, it's likely going to be light cruisers and destroyers that have high speed, and their guns can't defeat the Class A armor. Also, we're not just armoring against naval combat where we're going to be pointing our gun at the target. We're also armoring against aircraft. So if a bomb hits nearby and shoots splinters into it, or something like that, then we've got the armor protection on all four sides. The battleship only exists for these guns, uh, so they have to be well armored from all sides.
There are reasons why you might use Class B armor instead of Class A. Well, it takes significantly longer to make Class A armor. It takes about nine months to make a piece of Class A armor and only seven months to make Class B armor. So, the upper part of the armored belt is made out of Class A armor. That's the stuff above the waterline. But below the waterline, as it starts to get softer and form more of a torpedo defense um, and protection against underwater explosions, that is just Class B armor. And they're able to save some of the expense and uh, lead time with manufacturing on that. So now we are inside the ship and I can show you all five types of steel plating in one place. Uh, our deck system is basically three layers thick. The top deck is that inch and a half or 60 pound STS plate. And then you've got six inches of armor here, which is mostly class B armor plate. And then you've got the splinter deck that's 30 inches tall and a 0.625 inch high tensile steel plate. And then if you look behind me in this trunk, the trunk itself is structural, but it's made out of mild steel. Uh, so as you can see, looking at it, you can't really tell the difference. It's all the same weight. It's all just a factor of how much is, uh, how much production goes into it. So uh, mild steel and high tensile steel are both low carbon with high tensile steel being a little bit higher carbon than mild steel. Uh, the various armors, STS, B, and A, are all steel alloys and they've got a bunch of other stuff added into them in very precise ratios uh, to give them the properties that the Navy was looking for. And different countries developed different stuff like this, uh, but it was all more or less equivalent. So, inch and a half STS deck. Then you've got uh, four and three quarters inches of Class B armor on top of an inch and a quarter of STS. So here you can see the two types right next to each other and you can't really tell the difference except this weld bead that's been ground flush. Uh, and then the high tensile steel and the mild steel, again, you, you can't really tell the difference between this stuff, but it's all chosen specifically. The top deck is thin enough that we can use special treatment steel. The STS is able to be used as structural plating, whereas you wouldn't use, say, class A armor plate as structural plating. Uh, down here, you've got the class B armor plate mounted to an STS backer. And then you've got HTS down here, mild steel breaks pretty easily. Uh, the high tensile steel, because it's got slightly higher carbon, uh, will bend instead of break. So that will, whereas this, if it gets hit, will probably defeat the projectile, but you'll get spalling or splintering coming out of the back. The HTS is designed to catch that splintering and bend instead of being pushed above its tensile strength and breaking. But then for other things like this whole trunk, you can go cheap and easy and use mild steel. So decks on the ship that are not armored, like as we get below the splinter deck, those are all made out of mild steel. What country do you think made the best battleship armor? Let us know in the comments section down below. We're also considering making a future video comparing the various nations' armor. If you'd like to see that, also let us know in the comment down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and from a number of other businesses and private individuals. If you would like to join them in supporting us, there's a link in the description below. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.